So, so Father Nash is talking to his family. They're in the front pews here. And we have all of our extraordinary ministers here that are forming an honor guard for him. It is, it is. Okay, we'll be beginning Mass in just a minute. Actually, it's only 10.02. We'll be starting early. <laughs> I'll tell you later. He usually, he's usually out here before 10 o'clock mass, and we can't get him in to start, just so we don't start till 10 after. I said, actually, it's only like 10.03, and we'll be beginning earlier than normal. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Make his way all Oh, she's a first minister, that's right, yeah, I forgot about that. Wait till he finishes, when, and then you can start. Those lights have to be turned up. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Faustina Parish. Before we get started, just a few announcements. For your safety and the safety of those around you, please be reminded that anyone who is not fully vaccinated from COVID-19 must continue to wear a face mask. And those of us who are fully vaccinated, 
can use our own judgment whether we will wear a mask or not. Information about the Parish Cultural Center Atlantic City bus trip can be found in the bulletin. There are only 10 seats left. Please join Joe Stanky and his cadets for dinner and dancing under the pavilion at the Grove. Details and a sign-up form can be found in the bulletin. Today's Mass is for Albina McClowski. Thank you for your attention. Please stand. All peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. As we begin Mass for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we will sing all creatures of our God and King. Does anybody have any song requests? <laughs> yeah, be quiet. This is probably it. Well, anyway, we're having a few technical difficulties, but that's okay. That's all right. So let's begin our celebration this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> and the grace and the peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And as we prepare our minds and our hearts and our lives to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us begin by calling to mind our sins. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood to nourish us and give us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
God who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen and to stand in the bright light of truth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, taken from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does He rejoice in the destruction of the living. For He fashioned all things that they might have been, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of netherworld on earth, for justice is in thine. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. And this is the word of the Lord. And give thanks. 
The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in all the gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he, though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Now that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever has much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed in her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue's official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died by trouble the teacher any longer. Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did now not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. 
and they really ridiculed him. Then he put them out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, the child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, at that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders not to, not to that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> of course, that's been a long time ago. But anyway, um, I'm just wondering what else is going on around here that I don't know about. <clears throat> a lot of secrets, and you all knew it too. Oh, I'll get back at you. But anyway, I'm very grateful, very touched, removed, somewhat humbled. You know, um, uh, I appreciate, I really appreciate all this. But as you know, um, well, a couple of things. This was not just a one person show, it happened because of so many good people. And um, I, I think our parish of St. Faustina has probably endured more than a lot of parishes in the Diocese of Scranton has endured because of the closures and the consolidations and the, and the demolitions and all the very painful things. And yet there are so many good people like Mr. and Mrs. Hudak who are my adopted cousins. Now they're sitting with them, so <laughs> now they want to get in the will. Oh, anyway, that's just, we'll just let that one go. But anyway, um, all got behind it all and made it happen, even though their hearts were breaking. And like, and Maria and Mary all, and I, I shouldn't be name, mentioning names because there are so many, but I just am grateful for that. Uh, Father Alco is not here today. Um, he's, um, I, I think they don't let him out of the nursing home on Sunday, Sunday mornings anymore because <laughs> if they get green jello and he wants to stay there for that. And, uh, you, know, you know, Father Alco has been bugging me and bugging me and bugging me to put him in the will. <laughs> and I, I don't want to, I don't want to put him in the will. But finally he convinced me I could give him a, um, a table lamp, a nice table lamp. So he has it. And you know, he had the nerve to say, well, am I going to get a three-way bulb with it? <laughs> and I said, you know how expensive those bulbs are. But I'm not going to give him a three-way bulb. He just has to get his own. But anyway, he got the table lamp, so I don't know what he's complaining about. So thank you all for being here and doing this. Um, as you know, uh, this was supposed to be <laughs> my last Mass, and I'm going to go off into the sunset uh, this afternoon, but um, uh, I've been postponed. Father Brian Van Fossen is now at school for the summer, and <clears throat> he won't be back in town to begin here until sometime probably the second week in August. So you're stuck with me for a while longer. But we're going to have another. We're going to do this again, and we're going to <laughs> we're going to have another the party again. So uh, right. you know, I think that may be the, the the good part. You know, I did invite Father Alco. I did invite him to come to the party this afternoon. But I did tell him, bring your own hot dog. <laughs> See if he will do that. He probably won't. But I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the gospel. I guess that's what we're supposed to be doing. I don't know how much I can move around here. Bill, Bill's going <laughs> to... You know, we've been, we've been live streaming since last March, thanks to Bill's e expertise here. I tell everybody we spent thousands of dollars on the equipment to do this. Actually, we're using Bill's iPhone, and that's, that's it. <laughs> but but I, I don't, you know, tell them the truth, but there we are. And... Um, but since I've been doing this, we've been doing this, I just mentioned to you before, the paparazzi will not let me alone. <laughs> you know, I used to wonder, what was, what was Prince Harry complaining about? <laughs> now I know. Now I know what he's complaining about. But anyway, uh, I'm a legend in my own mind. <laughs> but however, uh, did you ever have the experience in life? I'm sure you all have. We have a plan. You want to go and do something or see somebody or, you know, whatever it might be, go to the store, 
or whatever it might be, and you have just enough time to do it, you have it all, you know, you have your whole day planned out, I can go, do what I have to do, and get back, just enough time. And then somebody comes along and uh, messes up your plan. <laughs> Did you ever have that happen? Uh, I guess we all have it one time. And that's kind of what happened in the gospel today. You know, this Jairus guy, he was, he was a, a synagogue official. It's very unusual that of all people to come to Jesus, he would, because they're the enemy. He, he, and Jesus was criticizing them all the time, the synagogue officials. But his daughter was dying. So he said, Jesus, could you come and just uh, cure her or do something? And so Jesus immediately said, of course. And he just went and a big crowd followed him. And while he was going through the crowds, uh, this woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years reached out and just touched his, his robe, you know, and uh, that was enough. And, and he said, uh, who touched me? Now, I, I used to think he just kind of like annoyed <laughs> that somebody touched him. That's not what he was doing. He was saying, uh, I, want, I want her to come to me personally, even though I'm, even though I'm on my way to some very important mission. It's okay. I'll stop and, and, and minister to her. And of course, that's what he did. <clears throat> so he didn't think of it as an intrusion. He didn't think of it as an annoyance. Oh, my schedule's going to be completely messed up now. <laughs> but he knew this woman was called into his life at that moment, and he was there to minister to her. Did you ever have that happen? You know, I, I begin to think uh, in my old age, I'm almost 41 now, you know, that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, sometimes these people come into our lives and they're people that God sent there in many ways. People that God sent into our lives. People that we're supposed to minister to and not be annoyed and be grateful that, that it happened. And, and the reason I'm saying all of that is because that, that was an experience I had. I had it many times, but just a week ago, I was called to Geisinger, uh, Geisinger uh, Wyoming Valley, hospital by a family member whose uh, mother was uh, was critically ill, uh, not actively dying, but seriously ill, and she was in intensive care, and she wanted me to go up and see her mom uh, and, and anoint her <clears throat> and give her communion. And I said, of course, and that was my mission. I thought, well, I can go up there, and, and how long it takes to drive to Geisinger, I'm gonna be there for a half hour, 45 minutes, or an hour, whatever it takes and then drive back, so I get back here just in time. So I'm walking to the parking lot on my way to, to go to the hospital, and I hear this man yelling, Father, Father, Father. And I went over and I said, yeah, what's up, what's up? He said, are you a Catholic priest? And I said, no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said, yes, I am. And then he said to me, um, are you Father Nash? I said, yes. And later on after, I'll tell you who this is, I, I don't want to mention the name publicly, but the rain would know, and maybe Pat, the older cousins who know these things. And um, he said, he told me who he was, and actually the family that he was from uh, grew up right in back of us in the park. They were our neighbors. And uh, he said, uh, and this this boy, this boy, you know, the young man, he's now a lawyer, and his brother is a professor of philosophy at King's, which really shocked me, because they were kind of, they were interesting boys, <laughs> to say the least. And, uh, and, and anyway, he said, you know, my mom is filled with cancer. The, the doctor gave her a four month prognosis. You think you could stop by and see her? I said, of course I could. And so uh, I had to, you know, disrupt my plan of get going into the intensive care, seeing this woman come back home. So I went to see her. And uh, as soon as I walked in, she, she knew who I was, and I knew who she was, because we were neighbors for years. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and it turned out to be, to make a long story short, just a marvelous moment. We shared all kind of memories of growing up in good old Lee Park, all kind of memories of, of doing that. And she remembered stories that I had forgotten, remembered people that I kind of forgot too, but jogged my memory about them all. And her two boys, uh, two, two sons, Good, good, good kids, but they were interesting. <laughs> and uh, one time they were playing a softball in their backyard, and the ball came over and went right through our kitchen window. And uh, they thought this is going to be a big. But my mother went over to the house, and she said, "We'll get it fixed. No problem. Don't worry about it." 
and gave them a, a plate of homemade cookies. I think they were meant for me, but that's beside the point. But, uh, and, and she remembered things like that. So I thought to myself, you know, God sent me to that parking lot and this young man to that parking lot at the same time so we could have this moment, have this moment. And uh, so instead of complaining about it, oh, I know my whole day's messed up, I have to, you know, I'll be late getting back to Nanny Cook. I just thank, thank God that it happened mm -hmm. because it was great. And even though she, you know, is terminally ill, they gave her four months to live, uh, we had a good time together. <laughs> we really did. And she was laughing and I was laughing and just remembering all the things that we, 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 we all shared, you know, from our days in the park. And then I, uh, I anointed her and gave her communion and she had a big smile on her face when I was leaving the room. Now her son, the one who met me in the parking lot, <clears throat> he's a, is a lawyer and I think, he, I think it's West Virginia where he lives and he, was, he took her to his home to be there for her impending death. And I get uh, Facebook messages once in a while from them and how, how much it meant that we got together. So, <clears throat> so I, I think in this gospel today, sometimes people come into our lives unexpected. Maybe we see them as intrusions, maybe we see them as inconvenience, maybe we see them, what, you know, what am I going to do? But, but, but maybe I look at it differently anymore. Maybe we, we all should. Maybe these are the people that God's sending to us at that moment. That's to be, to be Jesus to them in some way or another. That's our role in life. That's our goal in life. So anyway, um, that's what happened to me. And it happened many other times. I could, I could give you more examples. Um, how much time do you have? <laughs> I don't have any plans after this mess. <laughs> no, I won't do that, but you've got the idea. I'm sure you can think back in your own lives of, of, of the same thing that's happened to you. And so let's all look for moments of opportunity, moments of opportunity to be Jesus to somebody who may be really needing that concern. Today we live in a very busy, high-paced world. You know, everything is instant, instant, instant. Don't delay, don't, don't get mixed up with uh, time-consuming things that you don't have to, but uh, maybe we need to, because maybe we need, those are the people that Jesus thinks is God is sending into our lives. So anyway, thank you all for being here this, this morning. Uh, thank you for uh, celebrating this time with me. Uh, I can't say that I'm thrilled to death. I'm, I'm very grateful and happy about uh, about all of this. I don't deserve any of this. I really don't. I just, what I've, what I've done, in my opinion, is just did what I'm supposed to do. And that's what we're all supposed to do. Just what we're supposed to do and do it as best we can. And I've been blessed, so blessed with so many wonderful people who come into my life unexpectedly at moments when we're really important. So I appreciate that. Very grateful for my family who are here today. Uh, they, uh, as you know, I'm an only child. I don't have any brothers or sisters either. That didn't sink in. <laughs> I'll give you a tan time. But uh, they like my brothers and my sisters. I appreciate that so much. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. And all of our extraordinary ministers. I haven't seen you together since over a year because of the nasty old pandemic that took our toll on our lives. But now we're back and we're grateful for that. All right. So thank you again. So let's stand now and profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we now celebrate a divine interruption, you might call it, and that is to stop what we're doing and listen to the needs of the church and the, and, and the world. The response to our petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For monks and nuns, monasteries and convents, may they grow in holiness and numbers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, may they, may they uphold the law faithfully and govern wisely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For summer travelers, may they travel safely and find the Creator in the beauty of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who suffer with addictions find the sufficient grace and support they need to live their struggles bravely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the members of this assembly, may they visit the sick and find healing themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for life to be respected in all forms, from conception to death and every moment in between, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of those in our parish who are preparing to receive or have received the sacrament, may they be guided by the truth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the prayer requests received by our parish's ministry of prayer to be heard and answered according to God's holy will, we pause now to remember our own personal intentions in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in Christ, to rest in the peace of our Lord, including Cyril Stratansky, Adam Bonk, Irene Lasecki, and we pray especially for this morning's mass intention for Albina McCloskey. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to add to their brothers and sisters in Florida who are injured or died in the terrible collapse of that of that building may uh, pray for them and for their families and also pray in thanksgiving for one new priest who joined the ranks of the priesthood of the diocese of scranton yesterday and that is father mark de salas and uh, talking about interruptions in our lives mark has a a doctorate in theology and his um, goal in life was to be a professor of theology at one of the universities and God says, I don't think so, Mark, so I want you to be one of our priests. And so yesterday, Mark said, yes, and was ordained to the priesthood. What a great, what a great blessing. Let's also pray for uh, more vocations. We have nobody next year at all, and I think one the following year, and beyond that, I'm not really sure. <clears throat> but uh, many retirements, and uh, so we're going to have to make some adjustments. So let's just pray. In thanksgiving for Mark, for Father Mark, and for uh, more vocations of the priesthood, let's also pray for Father Alex Roach, who is the vocation director for our diocese. He's doing a phenomenal job under very difficult circumstances, a lot of challenges. So we offer all this in prayer this morning. We pray to the Lord. Lord and again, the one who we hold up as one whose life was disrupted in different ways, and that was the Blessed Mother who had her whole life planned for her up in Nazareth as a simple little peasant girl, and the angel came and said, you're going to be the mother of the Savior, and she said, I don't understand that, but I'll do it, let it be done to me according to your word. So let's pray to her this morning for her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I don't need it. No. Still has it. There you go. As the gifts are presented and prepared at the altar, we will sing, You Are Near.
now pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the, need, the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands <clears throat> as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. By sending down your spirit upon the, them like the dewfall, for that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And this morning we remember Albina McCluskey and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Faustina, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Bow off for each other, sign peace. Good to see you, person. of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. For communion, we ask you to um, come up the side aisles, go down by the center. Up the side, down this way. You can, you can be on one side, I'll be on the other. And then, um, but I'm gonna go to the front for all, all of you, because they're, they're old and... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me, his holy name. As we come forth to receive the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, we will sing the summons.
And now for our sisters and brothers who have prayed with us at home, this morning we pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And now our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of the souls. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Uh, and before we go in peace, I would just again like to thank you all for being here, especially those who travel to uh, here, my cousins, my family from places like Bucks County and Lower Ascom, <laughs> and all kind of wonderful places. And uh, thank you all for being here. And I'd also like to thank uh, our choir. This is the first time I believe they've all been together since a year and a half ago or whatever. <laughs> And for Maria, who's been our cantor this morning, thank you so much. I'm sure you all know that they couldn't sing a note until I started working with them. Isn't that, isn't that, <laughs> if they depended on me, they would be in tough shape. But they're wonderful, dedicated people who just glorify the Lord by their voices, and we're so grateful for them. So thank you all. And I think we did the final blessing, right? Now, yeah, sing. <laughs> As we go forth, we will sing, The Spirit Sends Us Forth. Does anybody remember uh, the um, Jack Benny? I, I'm so old, I can remember these things. So and Dennis Day was on there. Remember that? Anybody remember that? No, only me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he'd always say, Sing, Dennis. <laughs> so sing. Yeah. Sing, Dennis. Sing. There you go. Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor, a heart Savior to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free. and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ to scatter joy like sea and all our days to cherish life Okay, thank you everyone for joining with us for Mass today. And again, Father will still be here at least for another uh, another month or so. Um, I think about five, six weeks. And uh, But thank you for joining us for Mass today. You all have a wonderful day. God bless. Stay safe.